On March 9th, 2023, the alert level was simultaneously raised at two volcanoes which are a mere five miles apart from one another in Alaska. This occurred at both the Tanaga and Takawinha volcanoes as their alert levels were increased from yellow to orange due to a swarm of 464 earthquakes in the last week, which have seemingly got progressively shallower over time. These earthquakes have since March 7th increased in abundance, magnitude, and decreased in depth until many of them occurred right beneath the summit Tanaga cone. And on March 8th, harmonic tremor was also possibly detected underneath Tanaga, which means a volcanic eruption is now possibly imminent at its edifice, and due to a level of uncertainty, an eruption could also possibly occur at Takawingha. To understand why the possible detection of harmonic tremor is so important, I present this quote from a U.S. Geological Survey webpage. Harmonic tremor, or volcanic tremor, is the name for the continuous rhythmic seismic energy associated with underground magma movement. Supporting this assertion that magma is involved is that there appears to be ground deformation centered two and a half miles south of Tanaga Volcano's highest point, which has seemingly pushed up a section of ground by about an inch. While seemingly insignificant, numbers in this range tend to not occur unless magma is directly involved. While no one lives on Tanaga Island, two things could be reasonably affected if an explosive volcanic eruption were to occur at one or more of these volcanoes. These are Northern Pacific air traffic which could be temporarily grounded over a region over a wide swath of the Aleutians or more depending on an eruption size and the city of Adak. Before I explain what Adak could experience, I will outline my personal opinion based hypothesis about what is occurring underneath the Tanaga and Takawinga volcanoes. An elevated rate of earthquakes began occurring at the Takawinga volcano all the way back in November of 2022, but I do not believe this was the start of the magmatic intrusion. Rather, in my opinion, a magmatic intrusion had probably been ongoing for at least a week beforehand, but was intruding at such a slow rate that it stayed within the so-called ductile region of the crust, where earthquakes are incredibly rare and infrequent as it can largely absorb strain placed into it. Thus, when the intrusion paused going upwards, material kept flowing into it, causing it to branch off into a path of least resistance via what is termed a sill. This sill then reached the magma chamber of Takawinga and began slowly refilling it, which created the first detectable increase in earthquakes in November of 2022. After only minimal earthquakes for a few months, a new, greater input of magma occurred on March 7, 2023, which finally caused magma to flow into Tanaga's magma chamber. This generated hundreds of earthquakes and, in addition, may have generated another sill intrusion which may be heating a section of Takawinga's water table underneath a highly hydrothermally altered region. In other words, while the Tanaga cone of Tanaga could produce a magmatic eruption, the western section of the Takawinga volcano or the valley between the two volcanoes could be the eventual site of a phreatic eruption. The small city of Adak is located 65 miles east of the Tanaga volcano and, in all likelihood, if an explosive eruption was to occur from one or both of the aforementioned volcanoes, the only effects it might give the small city are a light dusting of ash since it would be most likely to blow to the east. With this being said, there is a theoretically possible but highly unlikely worst case scenario to be aware of. The area I have outlined on screen is highly hydrothermally altered and prone to minor edifice collapse as shown by one landslide the area already produced possibly at some point during the last 20,000 years. If a phreatic eruption occurred in this area, there is a chance it could create another large landslide. During a highly unlikely worst case scenario, part of this landslide could reach the ocean, generating a minor tsunami. However, if you live in Adak, in my opinion, I would not worry about this occurring as it represents a highly unlikely worst case scenario which will not happen. Just like I could theoretically get struck by a meteorite today, a lot of highly unlikely events would have to occur first before the generation of a tsunami could occur due to a volcanic landslide. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.